in the Collection 7, DxO has added some really exciting new control point tools. These can make your local adjustments quicker, better, and more selective. Hello, I'm Rod Lawton, and this is a video for Amateur Photographer on the new elliptical and polygon control point options in DxO Nick Collection 7. The Nick Collection has always had really effective local adjustments thanks to its viewpoint or control point masking tools. These can be quite difficult to get your head around if you are used to regular selection tools in programs like Photoshop or maybe Lightroom. In Nick Collection 7, control points can work in a couple of different ways. In Viveza, for example, you can use control points to apply some very detailed adjustments such as brightness, contrast, structure and more. In Color Effects, control points are used in a simpler way to control the opacity of the different filters in specific areas of the photo. But let's not get caught up in the differences between the adjustment tools, because for this video it's the shape of the new Nix 7 control points that we're interested in, and the opportunities this creates for much more targeted local adjustments. So I'm going to stay in Viveza to show how this works. Let's start with how the Nick control points have traditionally worked. You choose an area on your photo that you want to adjust, then you click and drag out a circular control point from this chosen area or tone. Now you can use these sliders attached to this control point to make adjustments, change the opacity of a filter or whatever. That might seem too basic to be useful. A simple circular selection might just seem too crude an approach, but that's not how control points work. What they do is target the colours and tones under the point where you clicked. That's right at the centre of the control point circle. They are already set up for very selective adjustments, without you having to do anything else. The circular control point shape simply sets the distance over which these selective adjustments are made. Let's see these two ideas in action. First, if I move the control point, you can see how it immediately targets a different set of tones and colours, depending on what's directly under the control point in its new position. I can also drag on its outer boundary, and you'll see that making it smaller restricts your adjustment to a smaller area, while dragging it outwards to make it larger brings in a much wider area of the image. A large control point area won't necessarily make your targeted adjustments less accurate, and it may help them fade into the rest of the photo more effectively. Now, if you've got a subject with an irregular shape and a larger control point makes your adjustments spill over a little too much, the traditional solution was to use a smaller control point size and then duplicate it to place it in different positions on the image. This works fine, but it's messy and leaves control points dotted around everywhere. That's where the new control point shapes in Nick Collection 7 come in. The simplest example is the new ellipse option. This is not a new tool, but an enhancement of the existing control point tool. You simply drag out a control point circle as usual with the regular control point tool, but now you'll find you can change the circle into an ellipse simply by dragging on any of the four handles around the edge. This alone makes control points far more effective for tall or narrow subjects. But it doesn't stop there. Once you have your control point shape, whether it's a circle or an ellipse, you can keep that shape, but change the size simply by dragging on the outer edge between any of those four handles. Right away, I can create a much more effective elliptical control point shape for my photo of this wooden church in Norway. I can lighten the shadowed side of the church with minimal effect on the rest of the photo. But I can make this adjustment even more precise with the new polygon control point tool. This actually is a new tool, right alongside the regular control point tool. It works just like you might expect it to, if you've used polygon selection tools in other programs like Photoshop or Elements. You click to add a series of polygon control handles to form an outline around the area you want to adjust, ending up back where you started to close the polygon. You'll see I've done this very quickly, without any real attempt to follow the outline closely. In any other software this would be a no-no. But remember, the Nick control points are already selective. My adjustments will only affect the tones under the control point. All I've done with the polygon tool is more carefully define the area 
I want it to act within. Having said that, I have noticed with the new Polygon control point tool that you can get more spillover of your adjustments into the surrounding areas. So it is a case of finding the best tool for the job for different photos. In this instance, I think I've got the best results with an elliptical control point shape. But while we're here, let's have a closer look at this new Polygon control point tool. Like circular or elliptical control points, Polygon control points can be moved around. But that's no good here because the polygon shape is made specifically for this area of the photo. So can you change the position of the sampled area without moving the polygon? Yes, you can. This is another new feature. And if you look carefully at the bottom of the local adjustments panel, you'll see there's a new color picker tool. If you click on this tool to activate it, you'll see an eyedropper icon within your control point polygon. You can now move this to different positions to change the area being sampled without moving the polygon selection itself. Perfect. And this also helps demonstrate how the color sampling for NIC control points works. Remember, the control point shape simply controls the area the adjustment is allowed to work over. The real work is done by the selective nature of DxO's control point sampling tools. If I see any overspill of my adjustments into the surrounding areas, I can simply move the control handles of the polygon to tighten up the selection a little, or use the knit chrominance and luminance adjustments to make the color sampling more or less precise. These new elliptical and polygon control points in Nick Collection 7 really do make a huge difference. Previously, you could always get around awkward shapes and objects using multiple control points, but it's a messy approach that doesn't always feel satisfactory. Now though, you can make control point shapes that follow the shapes of the objects in the scene that you want to adjust, and it's both a faster and much more efficient way of working. With Nick Collection 7, DxO has made a couple of the biggest changes to its control point tools that I can remember. I hope this video gives you an idea of what they can do and that you find it useful. So, thanks for watching. See you next time.